we can play the Jessica Hahn tape. Okay. She's not talking to me anymore. Let, let hey, me Gary, know. come in here. I want to get the circumstances right. I want to get everything straight. <laughs> And then we'll call Jessica and she can explain. I mean, Even though she's the best friend this show has ever had. That's right. It's hard to believe. We've done everything to her and haven't been able to lose her. <laughs> I thought I'd lose her on Mr. Ed's mother. <laughs> you can't shake her. So what's the deal now? Um, Je did you speak to Jessica directly? No. You did not? No. I, I was gone all day yesterday, and at like 4 o'clock in the afternoon, I punched into my machine, and I heard this. Hmm. I was kind of surprised. Okay. And I didn't call her back. I was afraid. Mm. I'll straighten it out. She's, she's looking for, for my attention, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we did her a great service yesterday. Excuse me. I mean, we've always what kidded around. What did we say? What did we say? Did That's we say all, something bad? There's no explanation given on this tape. That's what I don't understand. What? I don't mind that she doesn't like me anymore. There is one small explanation given. There is? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Don't blow it. Let me hear Let me hear it. Okay. <laughs> Hey, Gary, this is Jessica. Listen, tell Howard, you know, remember when Sam Kennison was dead to him? Well, he's dead to me, okay? I don't need a man tearing apart what I do for a living. I don't rip apart what he does. I always supported him and, and was there for him and flew across the country for him. True. And I don't enjoy the, the bottle sex joke he did this morning. Oh. And Jackie, you ought to tell him, too, to get a life and grow up. And I'm mad at you people and I'm not kidding it's very unfair I'm trying to make a living so grow up and, and next time you guys need a favor call somebody else okay see if they'll fly around the country for you hmm. ooh what, what was the explanation? <laughs> what does she do for a living? <laughs> Don't start. <laughs> I thought part of the thing was that if we called it a bunch of times and had fun with it and goofed around with the line... That we'd be helping. Yeah. We'd let people know it was there. I really did. I'll be honest with you. I didn't think that... I would never say anything to insult her. You know? Yeah, I don't think... I, you know, like, I'm, I'm thinking back to it. Now, I don't remember the bottle jokes. The bottle jokes were we were talking about snap and gyro, picking up a bottle. We girls, I'm going to instruct you with your snap and gyro. Remember we were talking on the bus about how you have to exercise those muscles? Right, yeah. And then you did like a bunch of bottle noises, like yeah. take off the caps and the exercise. Right. And all that. that was a joke. Yeah, I mean, that's not it's for real. certainly no heavier than anything we don't say on a day-to-day -day basis. And wouldn't she be shocked if we really did leave her alone and never called her again? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> all right, let's do that. Uh, all right, I'm dead to her. Uh, Boom, that's it. Never mention her again. I never have her on again, nothing. Right. <laughs> Cut her off completely. It's a good thing I didn't mess around with her in that hotel that night. She might have been, uh, she might have been telling people right now. You writing that novel? <laughs> oh, 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 I'm... Ooh, good thing I hopped out of that tub. <laughs> see, I was just testing her to see. Yeah, I was thinking of sleeping with her, but now I could see that oh, she could turn on me talk. at any time. Yeah, she definitely would talk. You'd be, you'd be so crazy. You'd be amazed at how many people are angry that Jessica works. Like, you'll talk to people, yeah. and they're just mad that she does any kind of work at I all. I know, and we're the only people who defend her. And we say, hey, let her go out and make a lot of money. Oh, okay, you know what? I've had it. That's it. I'm not going to defend. You wash your hands. I wash. <laughs> okay, Jessica, you got what you want. Oh, I'm sad. I'm gone. I hate to see a friendship end. Yep. We got it. We don't talk anymore. I'm dead to you. Unless you call in now and apologize to me. That's it. Oh. I'll wait exactly 30 seconds. Give her oh, 40. Oh, no. For the delay. For the delay? Yeah. Okay. 40 seconds? And that's it. And I'm telling you. How I will you stick to it. she's listening? She's listening. She's listening. She's always listening. This time, every morning. She called at this That's what she does. What did to her. She didn't get up and turn on the phone. <laughs> that's what she does for a living, <laughs> listen to me. <laughs> she gets paid for that. Yeah. I'm paying her to monitor the show. All right? But you may be dead to her. That's 10 listening. seconds. Ten seconds has gone by, Robin. Somebody ought to call her and tell her she should call. <laughs> Someone better, because I'm not kidding this time. That's it. This will be the last time you ever hear me mention her name on this show, and the last time you'll ever hear her on this show. Oh, you know, that's a promise you can't keep. Yep. That you'll ever mention her All right. name? All right, I probably will. But okay, but she won't be on. And as a matter of fact, people say to me all the time, write me letters and stuff, say, why do you have Jessica on so much? I go, hey, she always helped us out. I like it. I don't listen to people. But okay. Want to pick a fight? Go ahead. Sometimes I got to teach a woman a lesson. 
Go ahead. Oh, no call. At what time is Just it? Got ten more seconds. And nine, nine, eight. Oops. Oops. You know what's happening right now? Six. She's going. She's uh, sitting uh, by the uh, phone uh, and her there it is. Floating with her Four. Mind. What? Nothing. Two. Uh oh. This is it. Play the funeral music, Fred. <laughs> She's dead to us. Uh. You see, if this was the TV show, you could have a camera on the phone waiting for that light to light. <laughs> That's right. Know? There you go. You know what the great thing about the show is? If you stay friends with us long enough, you end up getting into a feud. Yeah. No matter what. No matter but she what. picked this one. I well, didn't do she anything. She has a record right. for <laughs> being with us the longest, I think. Yes, yes. <laughs> she was a good woman, but she obviously was offended by what I said. I don't... Uh, I don't necessarily buy into it. That it I... sounds like it must be real. She didn't call. Yeah. She must right. have been really offended. She could be sleeping, but I doubt she wouldn't leave that message and then sleep the next morning. You know what I mean? It's too bad I had a thing for her to do on our TV show, but <laughs> it's too bad. I'll have to rewrite that. I thought it would be good for her to be seen nationally, but hey, what do I know? Hey, give Jackie that spot. He wants hmm. to go national. She can hook up with Alan Combs. <laughs> We had a TV ad for her to do. Which I was going to call her about today, but, hey, you know. Okay. Good night, funny snapping gyro. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. I guess, you know. That's terrible. I guess nobody wants to work out there. Well, you know, find your own work. See what happens. Well, she is working. She says so. Yep. She doesn't make fun of your work. Don't mm. go around bashing her. <laughs> bashing her work. <laughs> Oh, boy. The other day, I do distinctly recall her saying she wanted us to promote it. Yeah. But, no, we're going to promote it in a positive way, like by saying this is... We're not saying it's negative or positive. We're just we saying we're, we're having fun with it. We sat and listened to it. Yeah. She's out of line on this one. But this time, she's dead to me. As I am to her. <laughs> but, uh, I'm not kidding this time either. Uh, if she let's calls see how Gary. Long this lasts. Mm -mm. Let's see how long this lasts. Nope, 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 nope. Mm -mm. Dead. <laughs> Dead to me. Yeah, but you've, like, accepted apologies from other people. Here's the last time you'll ever hear her voice on the show. Ready? Oh. <laughs> hey, Gary, this is Jessica. Listen, tell Howard, you know. Ruth I set her up with Andy. Number well, that I would be angry with. Yeah, that I can him. understand. Well, he's dead to me, okay? I don't need a man tearing apart what I do for a living. I don't rip apart what he does. I always supported him and, and was there for him and flew across the country for him. And I don't enjoy the, the bottle sex jokes you did this morning. And Jackie, you ought to tell him, too, to get a life and grow up. And I'm f***ing mad at you people. And I'm not kidding. It's very unfair. I'm trying to make a living. So grow up, and, and next time you guys need a favor, call somebody else, okay? See if they'll fly around the country for you. I can't imagine how I would ever be married to her, because she she's hard to figure. Like, why would you... All of a sudden. All of a sudden. I mean, we were the same <laughs> yesterday as we've been... Were the day before... <laughs> We don't um, change. Right. And the truth of it is your relationship with her is based on making those jokes. Of course. Without those jokes. <laughs> what are we going to do with her? Yeah, I won't make any more jokes. I <laughs> have a serious conversation every time you show up. Debate. <laughs> yeah. No, i got to put down my foot. i got to make an example of someone. And she's the one i got to make an example of. As much as it distresses me, because I like her, but i got to make an example of someone. When someone says they're dead, that I am dead to them, that's it. You get 30 seconds to apologize. You don't call in. That's it. You're off. She was our Carol Wayne. Yeah. Well, Carol was... Wayne died, so... Yeah, I was going to say. I hope yeah. she doesn't wind up, <laughs> like, floating uh, on a Mexican beach somewhere. Unlike Carol Wayne, though, Jessica died with a nice body. <laughs> <laughs> you know? You're yeah, terrible. That's right. Carol Wayne went. Took a look in the mirror. <laughs> that threat seems to be popular on this show. Yeah, you're, you're dead, dead to me. Well, that's because I started it. Now everyone wants to... But it's been used a lot. Yeah. Who's that? Who else has been dead? <laughs> uh, Sam was uh, Sam was dead to us. We were dead to him. Dice. Dice is dead to us. <laughs> Gilbert, Gilbert was dead Emo. to us. Emo right. was dead to us. <laughs> yeah. Bon Jovi was dead bon to Jovi's us. Bon Jovi's dead to they us. still are dead to us. <laughs> That's right. Bon Jovi's still dead. <laughs> Fred's in a coma. <laughs>
All right, it's 716-923-K, Rock, WYSP, WJFK. Well, we have to move along, even though there's yep. been a death in the family. <laughs> yeah, well. Oh, we'll just have to find some other guests. <laughs> Too bad. I really did have a TV ad for her. Yeah. And, yeah. and that... that kick off the whole show. And that all-important first slot or the first TV show. Yeah, I was going to give it to her. You mean the first slot, not you were going to give it to her. Yeah, right. <laughs> well... <laughs> Is Fawn Hall busy? Get her, <laughs> give me her number. I think Donna Rice is here. Can you call Donna Rice, Gary, and see if we can line her up? <laughs> Maybe it's time to have Secrete back in to do the weather. <laughs> Gary's answering machine always, <laughs> Gary's answering machine always has cool stuff on it. <laughs> Before I, I I'm gonna play John's tapes and they're gonna blow everyone away and it's gonna be a lot of fun, but and then we got to get to the news because I do want to hear yeah, the Elton John to, tape. Yeah, I yeah. was just listening to the Elton John tape. You could? Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> what do you do? Can't hear that now, huh? Oh yeah, you could hear it now. It was just that I it was, it's, it was recueing. You want to hear it? Yeah. Okay, hold John, on. John, can you just grab that from Robin? Not sure. Thanks. But Gary got this cool message from uh, Andy Bloom, our program director in Philly. He does that, he does that thing that he does, you know, that... That, that noise? That, that, that annoying yeah. noise? Yeah. When he's, he, as soon as he gets like the the he gets real full of himself and he gets out what he has to say, he makes that noise. You'll hear it. And you know how Andy gets excited? He's got a big news scoop, and then it's always something that's just totally irrelevant. It's really only relevant to him, mm -hmm. but he thinks it's real exciting. Gary, Andy, at six o'clock. Uh, you probably won't get a hold of me tonight, so I will give you the news now. Latest uh, flash from WMMR. John DeBella, the wacky zookeeper, has been relieved of operation manager duties at WMMR. <laughs> he uh, has been relieved of those duties. George Harris will be the interim guy with uh, someone new to be announced soon. So, uh, further being demoted, but he still is the head zookeeper. All right. Talk to you tomorrow, <laughs> I'm sure. Bye. Andy... Andy is not a grown man. <laughs> I mean, he's a grown man, but he has the mind of a nine-year-old. Yeah, we're like kindergarten kids here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> further uh, demoted. Further demoted. Not still head zookeeper. Still he a zoo head keeper. Head zookeeper. Uh, further demoted. Things going well. Andy comes back to Philly. Things going well. Imagine that being your only title now, head zookeeper. Yeah. His only title is head zookeeper. <laughs> He used to be operations director and head zookeeper. Andy loves this. Andy loves it. But we originally said when we heard they made that guy the operations manager, that would only le lead to more confusion and less yeah. concentration on his show. Well, my, why make him responsible for other people? <laughs> yeah, right. A guy who's just annoying and wants to yell at people. Why give him power? <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, Andy's been promoted to uh, WYSP Yenta. Yenta. <laughs> <laughs> Some exciting news. Uh, tell Howard and Robin, I'm uh, operations manager and um, head Yenta. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> With that ah. Yeah, like that. <laughs> I gotta get... <laughs> ah. Yeah, he smacks his lip. I like that. I gotta hear it again. <laughs> Gary, Andy, at 6 o'clock. Andy. Uh, you probably won't get a hold of me tonight, so I will give you the news now. Latest uh, flash from WMMR. John DeBella, the wacky zookeeper, has been relieved of operation manager duties at WMMR. <laughs> he uh, has been relieved of those duties. George Harris will be the interim guy with uh, someone new to be announced soon. So, uh... <laughs> demoted, but he still is the head zookeeper. Yeah, thank right. you, Andy. Thanks for the update. Talk to you tomorrow, I'm sure. Bye. <laughs> you dick! <laughs> <laughs> uh, still a head zookeeper. <laughs> it's nice to have Andy on our side, because he's like the, the cheerleader, you know. He, he, only he could get excited. It's like the difference between Gary Busey and Sam Kinison. Gary Busey comes out and he's just a host. Sam Kinison comes out and makes things happen. Yeah, you're wondering why Gary Busey is there. Yeah. Because <laughs> he smashed his head into a wall <laughs> and played Buddy Holly 25 years ago. <laughs> yeah, some good news. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a respirator. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> what a kook. What a kookala. Gary, Andy. 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 Yeah, what, what, he can't even say his own name. <laughs> like Ed B. Yeah, Andy. Right. <laughs> Gary, this is Andy. I just, uh, you know, it's really true. They, I saw another report that the last couple of years of Aunt B's life, she actually took to calling herself Aunt B. Oh, no. <laughs> Francis Bavier, who played Aunt B, she actually took to calling herself Aunt B. Well, you know, I read the other day they were selling off some of her stuff. Yeah. yeah. They were auctioning mm. some of Aunt B's stuff. I think good. Oh, I don't think so. I'm panties. Like, I'm like Aunt B's dress. <laughs> Aunt B's bloomers. <laughs> ooh, 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 look at that, Andy. Selling off Aunt B's bloomers. <laughs> <laughs> and those ooh. happening shoes she used to wear. Yes. Aunt B, the bees were buried. But then I get a panty. Ooh. Get this. Skivvies. Ooh, yes, Andy. Ooh, come on. Let's do some coke. <laughs> <laughs> With goober. <laughs> now, nah, Floyd, you know goober's only smoking hash. <laughs> <laughs> you know he's in AA. Ooh, that's right. He's no fun. Uh -huh. All right, 729. I'll tell you what, short little break. I'm going to come right back and start Sutter and John's tapes. They will blow your mind. All right, you have the Elton John tape. Oh, I do? Okay, I'll play that right after uh, these words. Right. Okay. Let's get into this. Come on, because this is everyone's been waiting for this. I know I've been waiting for it. Well, you still not going to what? Yeah, first the Elton John tape. All right, because this was uh, Elton it's John the in response to he was introduced to say something about Eric Clapton, right? Who was in inducted as the <laughs> living legend of rock and roll. <laughs> and Elton hauled off on Sam. Right. Oh, Sam's going to be out of his mind. Oh, I'm sure this yeah. devastated him. Because Sam really did do a good job. I thought. I'd like to say that uh, I'm doing this show under protest. I'd like to congrats, congratulate Sam Kinison on being the first pig ever to introduce a rock and roll show. Uh, but now back to Eric and nicer things. Um, Eric, what can I say? You've been a friend. You're, I can't think of any other musician, uh, any musician that wouldn't want to work with you. Um, you're the best. Guitarist. And uh, I look forward to playing with you at Nebworth. The future in the International Rock Awards, please have decent people in. That's when he they started cursing, and they cut him off. And then they took him because you know what I found out? They started taping at 8.30 and ran the show starting at 9.30, so that gave him an hour to cut everything up. Yep. Is that what happened? Yeah. Because they let an Eric Clapton slip slip through. Yeah, I know. He said something like... Uh, he said the S word. Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting too... I got that. But, you know, and I thought, well, maybe they turned on the delay after that happened. Because that was the only one they got through. I guess it just slipped up. You know, they probably say it was a quiet one. But everybody heard it, you know. Yeah. You don't miss the S word on these award shows. You're waiting for them. See, this is why this award show sucked. They allowed guys, suits and tie guys, to edit. And they go into the editing room. Instead of just bleeping out one word, I would have liked to hear, you know, I'd like to hear saying. what he had to say. Yeah, they just bleeped out everything yeah. after that. But you could see his mouth was still going. And apparently they heard it in the hall, and he said these uh, decent people to host these effing awards. Hmm. And then and then for the rest of the show, they wouldn't put the camera on Sam? Well, the end of the show was just going back to Eric to have him accept, and then the jam session started. And you didn't see Sam anymore, except that he was on stage during the jam, and then Eric Clapton called, called him, him over. over so that they could mug with each other while they were playing guitars. And they immediately just cut from Eric Clapton at that point and put the camera on somebody nobody even knows and just left it there. To the end of the show. Until Sam moved away from Eric uh, uh. and then they put the camera back on Eric. Again really? He did a wide shot. Now, isn't that interesting? Isn't that an interesting observation that an ABC executive hired Sam to host or whoever hired him to host these awards. Elton John makes a negative comment and then they panic and say, let's not show Sam anymore. Yeah, like, like, like who's Elton John? I mean, you know. I <laughs> mean, <laughs> All right, that's his opinion. Let him state it, and that's it. I'm sure that'd be pretty embarrassing for Sam. I'm sure. Do you think uh, you don't think Jessica badmouthed Sam to Elton because you know they're good buddies? And there you know. go. That could be. That could exactly be true. That's a possibility. And also, um, maybe Elton hadn't heard about Sam's new anti. Uh, talking about AIDS policy. Right. I said, you know, poor Sam. He goes and <laughs> changes his mind and says, I'm not going to do those jokes anymore. Yeah. But Maybe. if they chose him to be the MC, they obviously like him, and they had time to edit. Why wouldn't they edit out Elton John calling him a pig? I don't understand that. Uh, because... 
Because, uh, Robin, <laughs> go ahead, Robin. You answer Jackie's Maybe question. they thought Elton had a right to say whatever right. he said. Just not, just not curse. They just didn't want the cursing at the very end, and they just bleeped out everything after <laughs> yeah, because if a they certain point. And if they bleeped out the entire speech, then it would, the controversy would have been, hey, the guy wanted to say something, and no one would let him say it. And maybe he would never have done anything for them again. You right. censored me, right. and that's it, dudes. Dude. <laughs> hey, Dude. <laughs> Did Sam do anything, like, obnoxious? No. He was good. He was a really good he host. He never did anything during the show. He was probably the most entertaining part of the show. I mean, nothing else was really going on. Except for Dee's new image. I like oh, that. I liked it when they, they uh, made all those rockers say stupid things like, and Elvis's blue shoes yeah. will be leaving with... <laughs> I like when um, one of the... Someone had to come out and say, you know... These, some, this award goes to the new rocker in town, and um, these rockers, these new guys, are making the old guys look like, you know, like um, Pat Boone. Right, yes. And I was just saying, oh, boy, who would want to say that? Don't they, you know, and they get to pre-read that stuff, according to D. They, they had some pretty dippy things to say last yeah. night. And Clapton played the same damn notes. I've had it with him. That song was real dull. And here's God. God comes out and just bores everybody. Uh, yeah. You know, play a well, good song. God doesn't have to impress anymore. And Bowie's concerned about being a masculine guy now, and he comes out wearing a lace. But anyway, let's get to John's stuff, okay? This is I what thought I'm... that was a real strange song to do on the show. Suffragette City? Yeah. yeah I, I, well, I enjoyed that. That actually was a pretty pretty good high point. If he sticks to that old stuff, he's going to be just fine. Well, but... that's all he's doing. It's an oldies tour. Yeah, smart. This just is his the last Suffragette one, he City. Said. He's not selling tickets, though, you know. No, I know. Yeah, yeah you know, it's real funny because we got a call the other day from uh, from John Sher's office, and the guy, I don't know how familiar, I don't know if they listen to the show enough, but yeah. he said, uh, Bowie's playing Philly, and we could use some help on the show, and uh, I'm going to have uh, David call in. I'm like, oh, yeah, Great. okay, yeah. Well, I would love that. <laughs> right. And I said, have you spoken to David about this yet? <laughs> yeah. I would help him with it. Yeah. I happen to be a big Bowie fan. I know that. Hey, his wife is the one who said he was homo. <laughs> yeah, but somehow, you're, somehow you're getting blamed for it. Yeah, I know. It's like my fault. <laughs> Did you just picture that phone call, though? <laughs> Hi, David. Uh, is Mick there? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're uh, I'm going to kick your ass. Well, you do. You start to look for those homosexual tendencies every yeah. time you see them now. Well, the guy admitted to being bisexual his whole career. And also, he wore a dress on Saturday Night Live, you know, in clogs. Right. A big, a big long dress. At least wear a mini skirt. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Big, long, like, nurse's skirt. Skirt. I guess when you start doing the skirt thing, you start with a long one. Now, you see, if D really wanted to change his image, you start wearing skirts. Yeah. He would take notice. <laughs> yeah. Because I was all set for D's new image, and it was just D. I didn't know about a new image, so I wasn't... I just said, oh, there's D looking like D. Yeah, and I like D's old image. No, nothing wrong with that. I don't see a reason to change. It no. looks good that way. That's right. That's right, Robin. <laughs> all right, 749, 10 in front of 8 o'clock. And it's time now. John, you did great last night from what I hear. Yeah, I haven't started so much, man. First, we sent John to the Emerson Radio Hall of Fame. This is a uh, this is a bunch of uh, idiot guys who get together and award each other radio awards. It's not televised. It's not even put on the radio. Can you imagine this? The radio awards are not on the radio. They're nowhere. I'm the only one covering it. <laughs> this is the only radio that's covering this thing. These awards are announced nowhere. These are the, uh, some of the recipients. Here's some of the recipients, Robin. K. Kaiser. <laughs> what? <laughs> He was a band leader, wasn't he? Yeah, that's what I think. Hmm. But that was like before we were born. Talk show host Charles Osgood. Charles Osgood has never hosted a talk show. I was up against Charles Osgood. I lost. Right, yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Best music DJ, Dick Clark. I can't imagine when the last time he spun a record. Did you guys ask Dick Clark if um, when he has sex with his wife, does he ever... Get it rated by three sixteen-year-old yeah, yeah, yeah. girls. I, I think that was the last okay, one good. I got <laughs> before he walked away. Yeah, like Raider record. <laughs> he he see he didn't have a choice because everyone was everyone gathered around and was people laughing. See, you'll hear questions. that people gathered around and were like cheering John on. Oh no! <laughs> it's like a gangbang. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the accused. <laughs> you you cheered him on. You're responsible. Harry Carey got one, the sportscaster. All old guys. Not one well, not one young guy. Paul Harvey is a young guy because they show his picture when he was like 20 years younger. <laughs> comedy personality. 70. I like this. Comedy personality. Who's that? Bob Hope. 
Oh no! He sent a videotape that was like uh, it was like uh, made at home on a real crummy camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. He was standing there with his golf club in his hat. The camera was shaking because <laughs> he was operating his own camera. Blue ribbon selection panel. Here's the guys who selected the winners: um, Pittman, Mondale, Bruce Morrow. Yeah, I stood a chance. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Master of ceremonies, Alan Combs. God. Oh, yeah. What's going on with his face? There's an interview you should listen to. All right. Well, let's get into him. Oh, yeah, what do you do first? Okay. Who'd you get to first? Allison Steele is the first one. Oh, on. good. All right. Oh, man. Well, she worked for us. Yeah. Is, this one we worked better on video, man. <laughs> this, uh, this is what I told you. John spit on John Allison. John spit on Allison by accident because he started stuttering so bad. in her eye. Yeah. Well, you can see that on the TV show. Uh, no, this one look forward to. It, it wasn't only on her eye, man. You could see Did it. you get it on you camera from the TV her, show? You, you could see the beads all over her face, man. Oh, no, pretty embarrassing. I heard Chernoff was being a real jerk. He was, out of all the people I asked, Chernoff was the most uncooperative I've ever You know what Mark Chernoff, our program director, said to Gary? What? Couldn't John wear a suit. Like and the th one he wore? Yeah. And then Gary goes, well, what, what's what's the point? I mean, because don't you think it'd be funny? And Gary basically told him, J uh, Mark, when did you start writing comedy? <laughs> you know, you're not a real funny guy. There's nothing I don't think he was trying to look funny yesterday, but he wound up doing yeah. it. <laughs> I'll tell you something. You should have you put John in Mark's suit. <laughs> oh, no. And Mark, by the way, is dead to me. Because I'll tell you something, he's not on my team. Oh, no. He did nothing to help us. He didn't even want John one going. I wanted to wear a K Rock shirt. And I'm, I'm going to have it out with Mark today. Yeah, I've heard, been hearing some things that make me wonder. Yeah. You told Billy West not to work with us anymore. Yeah, that we didn't need any help. <laughs> <laughs> He's on the work with us, but just to save all his creative ideas for elsewhere. Yeah, for other other shows. Yeah, just keep your mouth shut in that room. Yeah. Okay, fine. <laughs> Pick up ideas and pass them off. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's what he's there for, to spy. Yeah, if you hear Howard say something funny, convince him that it's not funny, and then give it to uh, Flo and Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, um... Allison got a little upset by it. By she the, did. She like, recovered oh. nicely. Yeah, she recovered. Allison's nicely. cool. Yeah, she, that she one really question. Is. That one question was the was well, the. Uh, which, all right, let's play it. Yeah, I don't even know what the yeah, questions right. are. Right, Allison <laughs> Seale, this is on WWOR and WXRK in New York. Mm -hmm. Allison, huh? Yes. What's the wildest thing that ever happened to you sexually while you were on the air? This is one of Howard's questions. Nothing sexually ever happened to me on the air. Come on, I a, a fox to, like you. I have told this to Howard a million times. When I'm on the air, I'm working. And I'm taking care of business. And I'm paying. Do you know that in all the years that I was on a WNEW, I never got a, um, what do you call them, a, a, a breather, a, a mash call? I really never did. Honestly, I would be the first to tell you, John. Okay, let me ask a question. Did you ever date Thomas Ebb? Thomas Emerson before he invented <laughs> No, I know radio. Girls <laughs> Thomas who? We, we purposely said Thomas Emerson, you know. <laughs> Whoa, that was cool. <laughs> how, bad, how mad was she when she said that? Because, you know, we're always kidding Allison about her age, but she's really not that <laughs> she old. She, she broke that cardinal rule of finishing a sentence for a stutterer. Yeah, right. She did. She finished the sentence. Uh, okay, let me, let me ask a question. Did you ever date Thomas? Is this where he clams on her? No, no, I think it's the next question. Coming up, you'll yeah. <laughs> when are we taping the TV show? I want to see that. <laughs> Soon. Soon. This question. Did you ever date Thomas, Ab Thomas Emerson before he invented No, I know a lot of girls that did, but I wasn't one of them. I wanted to get a date with him, but he just couldn't see me for that. Really, really? <laughs> How do you make love to a Negro? <laughs> Without getting tired. <laughs> That's what you spit on her? Wait, is, it, is that what you clammed on her? I think so. Oh, oh man. No. This go, you gotta say this goes on all day. Wait a second. Uh, uh, this is, I, I'm telling you, man. I, I, oh, these are too cool. Uh, <laughs> I, really, I don't know what happened, man. I could not spit out anything. <laughs> yes, you could. <laughs> Just not words. <laughs> to a Negro. <laughs> Without getting tired. <laughs> You're like Paul Harvey. <laughs> How do you make love to a Negro? Without getting tired. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. <laughs> I don't divulge my the secrets of my private life on the air. Oh, come on, Allison. Oh, what? Come Have on. Have you ever made love to a Negro? <laughs> Listen, if I were to tell... Look, when someone asks me about me and Howard, do I tell them? No. Okay, oh, all right, all right. I'll get on something a little bit more um, mm -hmm. tender. 
Do you still use tampons? <laughs> oh, my God. I'm going to give you an award for bad taste. <laughs> Something else. Look, I don't discuss politics, I don't discuss religion, I don't discuss my toilet habits, oh and my I don't discuss goodness. my sex life. Now, you can have what's left. All right, then let me ask you, what's older, your hairstyle or your teeth? Oh, Ooh, hey, all right, who wrote what that? What is that? Who wrote that? What is that? Who wrote that? That's not nice. Was that on the paper? Yeah. No. That was not on the paper. I mean, where is that paper? Where is that paper? No, right there. Right there. I think I crossed that one out. <laughs> he highlighted no, he it. That was I don't on like the that. paper? You call and apologize to that woman. I like her. Guys, I'm just reading off the paper, man. She's a legend. How oh, dare you? You know, Shelly typed that in. I'm not kidding. It's not on the paper. Why, you? What's older, your hairstyle? Ooh, was that typed in? Well, yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, man. No, I'm, just, I'm just doing what you guys are telling me. You know, her and Jess are going to start a club. <laughs> The Howard is Dead Club. That was rotten. Yeah, all right, okay, all right. It was an accident. That was, it should not have been in there. I overlooked it. I take full responsibility. I thought the big tampon one was a little bit more offensive. Really? I like that one. <laughs> that was okay. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> no, 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 but I was really curious to the answer. <laughs> oh, okay, I'll drink to that. Let me oh. think now. And hey, meanwhile, tell me you wouldn't want to do Allison. Allison looks oh, damn yeah, good. She looks real good. There you go. Oh. Robin, you want friends or you want ratings? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. That was wrong. Oh, that was wrong. That was that was uh, Sutter and John's fault. Oh, what do you mean, man? Who know you? Who even thought you would ask that? <laughs> Just that was a throwaway. Head, they never thought you'd That's get right. that far. You're never supposed to go that far. She was supposed to kick you in the head after the tampon question. <laughs> She's got a good sense of humor, though. Yeah, she wasn't really yeah, uh, too disturbed yeah. by that. I'd say my teeth. Your teeth? Yes. Is K-Rock paying you more than you'd be getting from Social s Social Security? <laughs> Two or three bucks, maybe. Oh, uh, really? I mean, are you are you good friends with Chernoff? Sure. I like Mike. He's uh, uh, Mike. Mike. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best. That's the best. Do you? I like Mike. Mike Chernoff. Yeah, I like Mike Chernoff too. It's Mark. I can't stand. <laughs> yeah, I can see that Mike. Mark. He's a, a terrific guy to work for, and I'm I'm a voiceman. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> That's funny. I like Mike. <laughs> This is a woman who could care less. Good friends with Chernoff? I like Mike. He's uh, uh, Mark. He's a terrific guy. Mike, see that Mike? Mark. He's a, a terrific guy to work for, and I'm I'm yeah. I've always been very fond of him, even before I went to work. Uh, is there a, is, is there such thing as a casting couch in radio? I've never been on one. I don't know. I mean, like you never I have to please been, anyone sexually. Listen, for... I might have been. How long do you go on with her? That's, that's it. That's it. Take a story if I want to go that route. Yeah, I don't know. This is your ad libs. I think at this point, right? Oh, there's no one else to get. I, think oh, I just, see. You know. So he's just wasting time. Wasting time. He figures he'll just insult the woman even more. Oh, no, I mean, I'm really small potatoes. I might have been in the movies or on Broadway or whatever, but I've never gone that route. I don't believe in it. I think you should get where you get standing straight up, not on your back. Okay, Allison. All right. I really appreciate it. John, it's a real pleasure. And if you come up with any more smarmy questions, <laughs> let me know. Okay. No, right, she's great. She's I dig her, man. Yeah, I dig yeah, her. Yeah, she's real nice. All right, come on. Big round of applause. She handled it well. Even the tampon question. Oh, man. You think she's... Nah, never mind. <laughs> she looks damn good, believe me. But whether, whether or not that's a relevant question doesn't matter. She still looks good. Right, Robin? She's very attractive. Very sexy Very woman. classy lady. You bet. And that's what makes that so incredibly funny. It's you. You got balls, man. You got real balls, my friend. Oh, what's your name, sir? Dwight Weiss. Time for the March of Time. Who? Oh, yeah? Are you on radio? I'm accepting. I'm ex Who's this guy? The, Who is this? Remember the old newsreels, the March of Time? I'll pass on yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. I just, John, um, that's going to be funny for the TV show. He took John behind a curtain, put on an FDR mask, and did impersonations. This is Dick Clark coming up now. All right, let me take a break, because Dick Clark, we wrote a lot of questions. If John got to even three of them, we're in shape. Well, John couldn't spit out one of them. You couldn't spit them out? You got oh, nervous? man. Did you get uh, no, nervous? I got, I got out about eight or nine, but it was tough. Did man. you get nervous around the Dick Master General? Is that yeah, what happened? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I didn't want to get, you know, banned like Dice. You know, right. Have my albums banned when they... Uh, <laughs> okay, well, please. Your albums are banned. You just don't know it. <laughs> All right. It's 8 o'clock. WXRK <laughs> New York. The fix is <laughs> The fix is in. YSP, Philadelphia, WJFK, Washington. <laughs> oh. Three quarters of our audience, by the way, doesn't know who FDR is. That's why I passed on that guy. What is it, Gary? You know who's back from the dead? Who? Oh. Mark Chernoff. What's he want? He wants to talk to you. About what? I don't know. He so tell him to come in. No, he's on the phone. He's on the phone? He's not here? No. Hmm. Yeah. 
Well, we had a big day yesterday. Yeah. yeah, he was over at the Emerson Awards. Well, I want to get to Dick Clark. I don't know what this guy wants. Is that him? Yeah. What's he doing on the Philly line? No, no, right here. That's the uh, Philly line. Where's it? He should be on this line. Mark? Yeah. Hmm. What is it? Oh, are, you, are we on the air? Of I'm course we're on the air. I'm in Philadelphia this morning. I can't... What are you finish. doing there? I'm, uh... Don't mess with that show over there. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm doing good in Philly. Just Please, stay away. You're doing great in New York, too. I'm, I'm in... Right. Right. No thanks to you, well, well, uh, little I, buddy. Why do you say that? Think about it. You go think about it. Then I you call am. me. And when you know why, you call me. Am I, your, am I one of your biggest fans? It doesn't matter. I've always been and I continue to be. Can't, can't, can't stuttering John wear a suit. Don't mess with my show, please. You, you got a whole station that's falling apart. <laughs> mess with that. <laughs> You Use your genius on that. Leave everybody alone. <laughs> Do you know the whole... What is your problem with Stuttering John? Kiss his feet. He's going out. Wait till you hear this Dick Clark interview. Kiss his feet. Do you know the whole... Hope you get 19 more like him. Do you know the whole story yesterday? What's the story? Well, yesterday, uh, Gary asked our promotion director if John could have a T-shirt. And our promotion director said no. Mm -hmm. And had... Gary asked me. Mm -hmm. So I said that when he asked me, I said, what does he need it for? So instead of him, because I know John already has t-shirts, so I mm -hmm. didn't know why he yeah, God forbid. One, but yeah, you got to watch every t-shirt in there. you got to no, carry no, that no. t-shirt with you. I just, uh, if Gary, I, first of all, I'm not even sure why he asked. But How many people were in on this decision, Mark, on the on the whether or not Stuttering John should get a t-shirt? So far, I count two, you and the promotion director. Mark, you're already... You're already making this really bad. I asked because I asked Sharon and she said she had to find out whether John could wear a K-Rock t-shirt to a function. So, don't, Mark started the garbage yesterday about it. if I knew it was wrong or I wouldn't have asked in the first place. Well, I was, she I said was, ask I, you, so I did. But you didn't You didn't tell me, Gary, that you had asked Okay, skip, that, skip that whole part. How could there be such controversy over yeah, t-shirts? I don't understand Skip that whole either. part and get to the point where when you found out what it was for, then what happened? The, I said maybe it's not a good idea to wear a K-Rock t-shirt here. Why? There are people that I know, I'm going to this luncheon, there are people that I might need to either ask to have as guests on the station or to have some involvement, and as a radio station in its entirety, as the program director, I have to make the decision, is it a good idea to represent the Howard Stern Show? At and which, Rock, or of course it is. Just of course it's a good idea to represent the Howard Stern but Show. Tell, Howard tell, Stern Show is K-Rock, part tell, of it. Howard, tell me what the advantage is of John wearing a K-Rock t-shirt... Because we thought it would help him get credibility when we were trying... John doesn't have me. press passes because we never me, got Gary, any. Can I finish my question? Oh, go for it. Mm. All right. All right, all right. Tell Listen, me, I don't have time for this. Well, just tell me what the advantage is of him wearing all a right, K-Rock right, you know t-shirt when he's not... When he's going to be asking people I just, questions... Next that, time, just... just you, know, uh, you know what, John? No, no, next time, just ask me light. for the t-shirt. Excuse I'm, me, John. You're handling him all wrong. Ask me for the T-shirt. I'll go back and get your T-shirt. You put it on. Don't involve Mark with these decisions. He's the program director. He's got more on his mind than worrying about oh, T-shirts. Can I be honest with you, though? I mean, you need a T-shirt for Howard. Back. Yeah, I need a T-shirt because uh, Howard wants me to wear but it. But I didn't once say he shouldn't go. I was Can happy say, that he was going. It was no problem that he was going. Two things? I figured it would be great material for the show. You have no say in whether he goes or not. That wasn't the point. Oh, can I just say two things? Yeah. There's only two reasons I want the T-shirt. One being because um, I was out all night. All right, all right. Wait, 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 wait. But the other one is because I thought it would be, look cool having K-Rock on the TV. Don't think like that. Don't think about the K-Rock K -Rock and the TV, TV show are two Mark. separate things. I thought it would look cool having for the TV show me with You know what? Next time come to me. Don't bother Mark with That's this. The only you know, I have to side with Mark on this. These two morons are busy fighting with Mark on this. Well, they didn't even tell me they were doing it for the TV show. Well, hmm. Maybe that would have changed my mind. All right. Listen, Ma Mike. <clears throat> I mean, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> tell Allison Steele to get your name straight. I I'll take this up with you off the air. All right, goodbye. Mark Chernoff. He's right, you know. He happens to be right. Don't you two go off with Mark. You two are dangerous. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't go Gary off. and you are of equal intelligence. <laughs> and together you don't a even... a real heated argument about a shirt. Yeah, I don't need this aggravation. Don't you tell me you know, do, do, do. And then I get pinned at the radio station as a bad guy. Yeah. Wait, the yeah. argument wasn't oh. about the shirt. Oh. Hi, Mark. <laughs> are you still there? <laughs> <laughs> all right, Mark, I'm with you on this one. Oh, thank I you. am with him. I really am. I'm hearing all, both sides of it. i got to say, you two guys are going off half-cocked. 
I just wanted a shirt, man, because I... I so wanted a shirt because he slept so in So come a, to me. I, I would have gotten you a shirt. I smell. You always smell. No, I don't always smell. Why should today be different? I have a with a guy who never brings his... You know, he doesn't ever change his clothes. I just said I felt that I felt that Mark has become ashamed of the show. That was my argument. Well, you happen to be right, and that's what I will take up with Mark off the air in all seriousness. Because it's okay like to that. use me for my ratings, but if to have a T-shirt to use, you know, to get interviews is not and okay. You should re- promote like the rest of the show, even though you are yeah. an if, embarrassment. If right. I felt like that, why would I? Come the kid works for free. Right give him a stupid T-shirt, and that's it. Let him just go off with his T-shirt. Don't worry so much. And you shouldn't be arguing. You two shouldn't be arguing with Mark. I didn't argue with Mark. No, Mark's got important things to do, like figure out where to buy a new suit. <laughs> All right, Mark. <laughs> go ahead. How long have you had that suit, Mark? Yeah, what is that suit you were wearing? Graduation. You didn't like it, I guess. No. Ooh, man, it's, what is it made out of? Do you know? <laughs> Cotton. No, no, it's way. not. No way. No way. You bring it in, I'll take a look at it. That suit stands by itself. It's a fire hazard. <laughs> it's made out of paper. So you don't like my clothes. Yeah, but th- buy a suit that becomes a man in your position. <laughs> Just get rid of the clip-on tie, Mark. <laughs> yeah, the tie, too. Listen to a man it's who doesn't a, even have a shirt. Well, you know it's not a clip-on tie. <laughs> you even help try to straighten it out. <laughs> it's not a clip-on tie, but it, he, looked like, he looked like my Jerry Mahoney doll. It's a fat tie. Is what, that's yeah. what it was. Yeah, Maybe when, that's what it was. When did they go out of style? Well, I, I guess I don't dress in style, then. No. I'll take you up on your offer, and you can take me shopping. All right. And he had that weird colored shirt on. Oh. Was what was wrong with the shirt? He looked like a computer <laughs> engineer. Pale yellow shirt. Yes. All he didn't have was a pocket <laughs> protector. Yeah, he needed the pocket protector and the little thing that said Sears on it yeah. and his name, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> the funniest part of all, standing in the hall, he was so proud. He thought he looked like a million dollars. Yeah. all giggling. You, know? I know. <laughs> you need a dark blue suit. Here's that the name of the suit. It says John White by Palm Beach. Okay. I don't know what that means, all but right, that's all the right. name of it. Okay. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye, 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 goodbye. Goodbye, Mark. Goodbye, Howard. All right, goodbye. There he is. And, and by the way... Yes. Um, see if you can squeeze Billy into my schedule. He's he? All right, goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. <laughs> Wait a minute. All right, I'll see you later, Mark. Don't, okay. don't you think Bill, Billy is very valuable to the entire Yes, he industry? absolutely... All right, I got to go. I got to go. No, I'll talk don't. to you later. Stay on the air. No, I got to go. Uh, please, I got to go. I think Billy... Billy... <laughs> Billy, Billy? <laughs> Billy, Billy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Billy's got to go. <laughs> now, I happen to agree with Mark, and I'm out of line. Okay. You guys you guys just got to calm down. Let me handle some things. I always tell Gary just to handle things, but I realize I got to be and handling Whenever you do that, what happens? <laughs> and I like Gary's energy. I like him yelling at Mark and stuff. That's good. No, it wasn't, I wasn't yelling at Mark. We were having a disagreement. Uh, let me play the Dick Clark interview. He's my boss, and I would never uh, yell yeah, at him. Yeah, right. Okay. All right. Here's the Dick Clark interview. <laughs> I tell you something, I got to get have less people around me because the more people I have around me, the worse I look. Oh, hey, come on. <laughs> you two guys arguing with Mark over a t-shirt. It's not that important. Gary is definitely Mr. PR. I'm defending you, man. <laughs> Don't ever yell at Mark unless there's a camera running either. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're defending me, but you're defending me on something that doesn't even require defending me on. Right, but... If, you, if, if John needs a t-shirt because he smells, come to me, uh-huh. I'll give you 20, let him go downstairs and pick out a t-shirt. It was a larger issue, but I understand what you're saying. I shouldn't, okay. have, I shouldn't have done that. Right. <laughs> All right. Gary knows when he's wrong. It was, you know what it was? Which is 99% of the time. It was just another thing like the time I did the Paul McCartney interview and they handed me the thing, you were not from K-Rock. You were yeah, from I know. Which for, well, we'll talk about that later, too. Mark, Mark should be proud of our interviews is what you're saying, and I agree with you. Okay, now, he let's get... And here's one he should... Figure out how he should handle it and go handle it, because we he, are here at the station. Here's the Dick Clark interview, which I think everyone should be very proud of. Okay. All right? This is a five dollar T shirt we're arguing about. Hi, Dick. How are you? Hi, I'm John. Hello, John. How are you? John. What are we doing here? This is for uh, WWOR and, okay. and, and the XRK. And, and, uh, Dick Clark. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that camera gets you know gets into a lot of places. He was, giving, he was giving John a funny look because, you know, he's Dick Clark and John's got long hair yeah, and a right. T-shirt. Not, not a K-Rock one, but he was wearing a T-shirt. I got douche chills already. <laughs> <laughs> but he was like, he was like, okay. okay. You know. Dick Clark's a good guy. <laughs> to a point. He's a trooper. He was a real good guy. I don't know, when I, when I hear about his uh, history as a young man but hanging around with Ed McMahon and they both hung out in the same apartment building and stuff and were pals, I don't know. Oh. Makes you wonder, you know. Makes you wonder how good a guy he was. I um, know him well. <laughs> How embarrassed were you when every man slobbered a proposal on, on national television? <laughs> Did you hear the question? Yes. How embarrassed were you when Ed McMahon slobbered a question? 
a proposal a on national television. <laughs> uh, New York. Yeah. I'm doing well. How embarrassed were you when every man slobbered a proposal on, on national television? When he slobbered a proposal yeah. on, on national television? I don't even know what that means. I, you know, on the uh, TV commercial, I don't know what I'm talking about. John doesn't know what he's talking about no. on the TV commercial. Oh, yeah. on the TV commercial. No, on the Thanksgiving. Know, yeah. It was the Thanksgiving Day Parade. I didn't know that. You guys oh. got to preamble me before these questions. I thought like, did you like, li- you know, you know. I thought you listened to the show every day. You're the one logging it. I am, but right. I, I, you don't hear us ever talking. I knew I didn't put two and two together. I was nervous. Robin, about will he I ever work again? Anything from the show? No. <laughs> he just vlogs. Huh? I right. vlog. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> what is he supposed to be uh, taking this in? To if he knew what any of this stuff meant, he wouldn't. He wouldn't have the nerve to ask. That's true. That's not true either, because <laughs> I asked him the other question. I knew what that meant. A man who speaks well for a living versus a man who spits well for a living. <laughs> <laughs> well, you haven't... There's the first question. We have a... Were you ever naked behind the podium of, uh, on a bandstand? <laughs> Shocker. Uh, what are you purporting to represent here? Well, I, I started that's why I had a problem getting at the questions. So I'm, you know, I'm big, Am I on bloopers? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let, let me ask it. Did you kill Dice Clay's television series? No. Because, because there is rumors about that. Of course not. How do you react to the rumors? I don't even answer them because they're without foundation. Will you see Ford failing? Do I see him failing? No, no, no. <laughs> Will you see? Oh, this is great. This is just so cool. Oh, this is so cool. Hey, can we take a break and then finish this? Well, sure we can. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let, let me take a break. And how many more? There's a lot of questions, right? I got mine. Oh, there's oh there's good. Okay, all right. Oh, we'll be back right after. Don't move from your radio. <laughs> 923 K Rock is WXRK New York, the home of guaranteed 20 song music marathons. I was in here yelling at uh, <laughs> Stuttering John and Gary. <laughs> Gary wasn't there. But I was yelling at him. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. I had to give a seminar on how to behave around Mark. Because Mark is their boss. I didn't know Mark is my boss, too. I didn't argue with Mark. We don't run Mark's life. I never argued with him. Right. I never did either till yesterday. It was just about the show. I just, I love the show, and I think it should be, you know, we should be treated, with, you know, with a little respect. I know it's a goofy show to some people, but I... It's bad enough everybody else treats us so goofy. Right. It'd be nice if the, the right. guy right. we work for exactly. would treat us kind of... Yes, but we have all. to be a little diplomatic right. with Mark, too. Right. Exactly. Nobody you, has you to should, go off oh, wait till you play his I don't dislike Mark. You guys can't act like me. No, no, no. It's, I was just defending the show. I don't dislike one eight hundred. Ready? Let's get back to the interview. Emerson Radio Awards. An awards that I've never been given an Emerson Radio Award, so it can't obviously be a radio award. Well, you have been nominated. Uh, don't yeah. you feel honored just yeah. to have been nominated? <laughs> <laughs> My cousin Brucey. <laughs> Foundation. Will you see Fort Failing? Do I see him failing? No, no, no. Will you see his... Ford Fairlane is the name of Dice's new movie. Uh, well, obviously, he doesn't know about that, does right. he? Oh, will we see Ford Fairlane? Probably. What? Probably. <laughs> um, the, uh, the first time that you had sex, your wife did, did uh, three teenagers kind of cut <laughs> rated? What is this? Who, who are you? <laughs> what, is, what is the joke? Howard Stern. Yeah. Oh. Do you like Howard? Oh, Howard. That's it. Go home, Howard. Now, who said who said Howard Stern show? Eddie Cantor's grandson. That's the guy uh. laughing at Eddie Cantor's grandson. <laughs> Mammy. Oh, well, that's Jolson. Excuse me. Uh, hey, wait a second. You see, if that guy didn't ruin it, he never would have known where you were from, and that would have... Well, then there was a wo- the, the woman, did you hear the woman earlier? She said shock radio. Oh, shock radio. She was shock from, radio, uh, shock radio. I shock radio. There were other reporters hanging around. I think she was from ABC or something. Yeah, they're all hanging around because they're waiting to hear somebody uh, ask a question they can actually, you know, be entertained by. Oh, they're very entertained by us. Yeah. There's a lot of them. They're all disgusted, but notice they all get the pens and pads out because they don't have the balls to ask any good questions. I think that's perfectly legitimate. Maybe he did have three teenagers rating him. How'd you scale. come up with that idea? All right. How'd you come up with Raider Record? Because <laughs> I, saw a, I saw a reporter, a TV reporter from NBC, and I wish I could remember his name, but I saw him sandbagging us to, I think it was Dick Clark or Paul Harvey. But oh, tipping goes, him off, huh? No, he just goes, oh, did those Stern guys get you yet, man? Mm. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, like, like, it's so horrible. These are such horrible questions. It's so horrible. 
Oh, Howard. Go home, Howard. You know, he has a new TV show coming out in, in uh, July. I wish you a lot of good luck. There's a sound bite. He'll put that on. Can I just ask you another question? Sure. Okay, thanks a lot. Did MTV... Did MTV... I'm really stuttering bad here. Is Clark laughing at you? Oh, my Is he laughing at you stuttering? No, he's trying. He's trying, you know. He's crumbling. Yeah, right. He's trying to hold it in. You know, imagine John on, like, $10,000 Pyramid. Oh, and, forget yeah, about it. And the person goes, um, blue eyes. And John's like, <laughs> It would turn into the $1 Pyramid if John was. I'm surprised he didn't book you for that show. Because, you know, Dick Clark's got that image. He wouldn't laugh at a stutterer, yes. you know. It would have been funny if like, Dick just turned around and smacked him in the head every time you know, give, give him a jump start, you know. Uh, 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 okay, I have a question for you. Dan TV, did I rip, rip off your uh, dance show? <laughs> oh, people have ripped that dance show off since the beginning of time. Why should they be any different? Uh, no, I agree. Does um, I, I, a Shadow Steven sound a feminine to you? <laughs> I don't believe these. Did Howard ask you to ask me these questions? Was he such a coward that he wouldn't show up and ask them himself in person? Howard, the next yes. time you want to do this to me, show up. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Dick. Appreciate it. I had no idea what you were asking. <laughs> that was pretty cool. <laughs> yes, you, don't, oh. you want to know what other questions we had for him yeah. that John didn't get to? See, I would have kept shotgunning these no, questions I, out. I, I, I was, it, He's shotgunning Howard, isn't he? Uh, that's true. <laughs> Who am I talking about? I was trying to get him back, Howard. I was, I was, I was I, a few what? times. Now, John finished, and then he went back to him again a little bit later. Yeah. And then when John went to go talk to Paul Harvey, mm -hmm. Dick Clark was standing right next to him, <laughs> and Dick, Dick started, like, walking backwards. John seems to think that Dick really dug him yeah. and wanted more. But, I mean, he didn't hate you, but he... He definitely wasn't. Yeah, but once I seen him again, I go, Dick, can I ask you a few more questions? He goes, yeah, in a minute. No, 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 he was blowing yeah, him right. off. John didn't realize he was getting the blow off. Here's the other questions, all right? Because he only got to a third of them. Is Casey Kasem's wife a man? <laughs> Is Casey Kasem a woman? <laughs> Did you ever see Cousin Brucey take payola? <laughs> How do you respond to the charges that you are evil? <laughs> How do you respond to the charges that you are an alien? <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever consider making love to the teenage girls on bandstand? Were you secretly laughing at Neil Sedaka like we were? <laughs> Did you ever see Chuck Berry naked with white women in a high society magazine? Do you think Dick is an appropriate name for you? Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, maybe I should have just went straight down to one of them, you know what? Right? Now you did good. Believe me, you had more balls than anybody would have. Right, Robin? Yeah, well, I just noticed that you you guys have forgotten about the, the warm-up questions. Yeah, you just yeah. go right for blood. Now. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> there's no more. There's no more preamble. Yeah, you don't even give them give no. them the idea that this is a regular interview anymore. Oh, well, you gotta just get in there, Robin. <laughs> you know, you know, when you think about it, it never helped us in the past to ask some nice no, questions I first. Mean, the people would be standing there, be right in there, and then all you know, they say, "Oh, it's a normal interview." They get comfortable, and then you blow them away. Because if you remember the the uh, Carl Yastrzemski interview, we did ask him one nice question first, and then as soon as you start in with the bad oh, one. Carl Yastrzemski, well, he was a bad example. The, yeah. The classic example of this was Candace Bergen's mother. John's opening question to her was maybe the, the most brutal question ever. What, did your uh, your husband ever put his hand up your back and try to work you like a puppet? Woman's <laughs> 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 80 years old. Oh, <laughs> uh, hey, Robin, a pitcher doesn't throw his first pitch underhanded. He just goes in and he goes out and gives it his best shot. Yeah, but that. the batter gets to wind up. I see. <laughs> There's a couple of warm-ups. Yeah, you know, he gets to stand there and get ready. I see. Hey, uh, so what's another good one? And then we got to... Um, why don't we go straight to Walter Mondale? That's really good. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best one. Oh, man where is ran that? for president. Or, or man ran for president. <laughs> oh, Chernoff's a real good one, too. Chernoff's good? Yeah. All right. Well, I bet if I do Walter Mondale and Chernoff, uh -huh. we do a little news, because Rain Pryor's coming by, too, Richard okay. Pryor's daughter. And, and, and turn off his short. It's only, I asked two questions, and then he... Don't he, talk about his height. He was the only... <laughs> <laughs> Don't keep saying turn off his short. <laughs> he was the only one who, who actually left from me. You know, he walked yeah. away. Cause yeah, he, he was, can't be involved. Well, well, he was busy, um, you know, talking to all the, all, all the people, and I just... Well, there he is. Who's this, Mondale? No, uh, turn off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is Mark Chernoff, our program director, as he networks. Notice the suit. 
Hey, Mark, how are you? Oh, boy. <laughs> Hi, John. Uh, how are you? This is, uh, I'm fine, John. This is for WXRK and the Howard Stern Summer Show. So tell me, Stumpy, are you hostile because you're a dwarf? <laughs> <laughs> That's Alice Steel laughing. Alice and Steel's cracking up. <laughs> That's the funniest part of that tape. So tell me, Stumpy, are you hostile because you're a dwarf? <laughs> when a woman laughs at you, it's the oh, worst. That's sad. I gotta hear that again. <laughs> what happened? When he, what was he I doing? One more off. He's just like. Well, <laughs> I mean, he yeah. just that, that silence is deadly. I'll tell you what it was all about. Mark, Mark, I think got real embarrassed because he was kind of holding court. He had, mm. you know, he had Al he had yeah. Porta Town yeah. there, all his people, he had some other radio people there, yeah, and then yeah. John just barges in. Uh, and, hey, <laughs> Suddenly, he goes from being, you know, program director of a major New York station to Stumpy. Okay. <laughs> well, every question we wrote for Mark, I call him like Napoleon. <laughs> well, wait. wait, wait. All right, all right. <laughs> So tell me, Stumpy, are you hostile <laughs> because you're a dwarf? Hysterical. <laughs> Come on. Is that the best you can do, John? Did you make these up yourself? Okay, mole man. <laughs> Gary asked you for a t-shirt for me. To, to, to promote the station, you suddenly get as stupid as you are short. <laughs> Oh, my God. You wrote that question? I might have. Oh, it might have been Fred. It might have been Jackie. <laughs> that was it. That was it, huh? Oh, he walked, he walked away. away. Oh, we had some good questions for him. Uh, <laughs> Mark's an okay guy. Yeah. He's a nice guy. He's I thought he was dead to you. He is. He's a good ball player. So. Why don't I just call Tom now and tell him I have to meet with him? <laughs> <laughs> you know Tom's going to have to meet with me. <laughs> two minutes. I have to see you two, yeah, two minutes. minutes. And you know what he had to see me about yesterday? What? To tell me not to let the bachelor party get too out of control. Oh. I go, Tom, who goes to a bachelor party where it doesn't get out of control? <laughs> get off my back. If you want, uh, this is the Paul Harvey one. It's pretty short. It's only three questions. That's all, right. all Paul could take. All right, I'll tell you what. Let me take a break for spots. Listen to Paul Harvey, Walter Mondale start the news, and Rain Pryor might come in. Okay. Let's see if she's here. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> Unbelievable. And then we got to call Sam and find out what happened with Elton John. Uh, yeah, I want to know how he yeah. felt about that. We'll Her be back dream. right after this. Yeah, who's this on the tape next? Okay, this is this is uh, Paul Harvey. Okay, and it's just the thing you have to understand is like he's been in broadcasting what forty years or something. Yeah, the highest paid broadcaster in the industry. This he's is one, our man. He's one of those guys that that I mean he's a nice enough guy, but he's one of those guys that's got that smile like you know real glued, conservative glued to his face. And he really this is not the kind of broadcasting he either approves of. Right. I don't even think he knows about it. <laughs> <laughs> he's been in a cocoon. Hi. Can I ask Paul a few questions? I already I know what's Dick Clark was standing there. Oh, okay. This is um, for the Victor K in New York and the Howard Stern Summer Special and um, this summer. Listen, how did you develop? It's gone from the Howard Stern Summer Show to the Howard Stern Special to... This is just for the summer. Yeah. <laughs> for this summer. <laughs> All right. He's nervous. I'm You'd nervous. be nervous, too. <laughs> Your delivery. Oh, you missed the question. Well, that question suggests a lot more introspection than I ever really allowed. You're... Oh, you're doing your Paul Harvey impression. Okay. Yeah, I know what <laughs> Sure, fire away. Oh, okay. This is um, for the Victor K in New York and the Howard Stern Summer Special and um, this summer. Listen, how did you develop your delivery? <laughs> Well, that question suggests a lot more introspection than I ever really allow myself. Oh, 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 oh. That's something that just kind of evolves over the years. It's not done with any real um, pre-conception uh, or, or enforced discipline. Okay, thanks. Um, do you get paid by the hour? <laughs> 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 Let me just... The man is 70 years old. You're right. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Do you get paid by the... <laughs> this he got... Hour? Right. But see, now, this no. he found humorous. Okay. <laughs> this joke he got. All right. It's the next joke he doesn't get. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Okay, um... Can being Paul Harvey get you a lot of... girls? <laughs> Uh, just one. 
but uh, that, that 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 one's lasted uh, that one that one's lasted so many years. A working marriage. Congratulations. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's good to hear. It's good Thank to hear. You. Yeah, John's been divorced. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh a final question. Oh, do you want to? Uh, Wish Howard Stern on his summer special this summer? I'm sorry, I'm not acquainted with the program, so please forgive me. Oh, no, no, it's, right. it's quite all right. You didn't ask him the right way. Do you want to say something special uh, to Howard? Uh, Howard, man, I, I, w- I was kind of, like, uh, frazzled at this point. Stern? <laughs> okay. Where's Mondale? Right, um, that was good. That was real good. Oh, man. Do you get paid by the... hour? <laughs> that was the kind of thing you really couldn't stutter on your time and you had to be there. Yeah, you had it. John you had came it. through. John did come through. <laughs> <laughs> my, my demented son over there. <laughs> like we're nodding at each other with approval. <laughs> yes, son. Yes, my Jedi. The other day when uh, Jackie and Fred sat down to write some questions, they were saying, now, should we write some soft ones? Should we go easy? What are we doing here? And I said, look, you know, John always wants those really tough ones. And John yells at us. (laughs) John will say to us, you can't give me any hard ones. These aren't strong enough. These were strong enough. Oh, these are great. But, uh, you know, they had to be told, don't you give him any soft questions. Don't puss out. (laughs) My compliments to the writers. (laughs) Hats off to you, my brother. I feel like the Jedi Master. I'm Yoda. I send him out on his mission. (laughs) He's not not digging this at all. John and I are giving each other these glances. My Freddy's Jedi. Still not over the time John yelled at me <laughs> like in California. So when I bring right. up that story, he starts giving John look. Yeah, Fred was real upset when John started yelling at the writers. <laughs> oh, yeah, like, yeah. Why don't you guys go, go go for it? Fred was like, oh, my God. Oh, God. You know, I put in so much time on this show. Now, look. It's come to. Yeah. Oh. Guy telling me my material is not wacky enough. <laughs> Ten years in radio, and I'm taking it from him. And Fred was being, Fred was the sensitive one thinking, hey, he doesn't want John to get killed. Right. <laughs> oh, <man>. <laughs> <laughs> time he'll think about oh, you. Come on, Fred. We made up. Everybody. And then... I think we did. <laughs> sometimes when John goes out on his mission and I look at him afterwards and he does well, it's like, remember in uh, Revenge of the Nerds 2, Booger meets the uh, Chinese guy? Yeah. <laughs> the, the Chinese Booger Master? <laughs> I feel like the Booger Master. <laughs> yes, now you've learned. Now you're ready to go out. <laughs> Vice President Walter Mondale, Robin. <laughs> Maybe John's greatest accomplishment. Who, 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 who David Dinkins calls Mr. President. Yeah. Really? Yeah. He calls he him did? Mr. President. Yeah. 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 It wasn't a mistake. Nice. Yeah. He's, he's got an explanation. Oh, oh. All right. <laughs> oh boy. You're almost ready for your toughest assignment that I'll ever give you. <laughs> Which is? Benoris is at home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> That's like sending a person into combat. Fred's family. <laughs> That's going right I'm on the coffee. front line. You might be ready, my son. <laughs> not in a million years. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's not. They'll shoot him. He sets foot on the property. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Mondo. How you doing? How are you doing? Nice to I voted for you. Good. No, I am a, make that statement. I am a Democrat, and I, I seriously. Oh, I'm sorry. This is uh, WXRK in New York. That's a radio station. <laughs> oh, and, and for the Howard Stern summer special for uh, Channel 9. Okay. I voted for you. Uh, let me just say again. And, and, uh, too bad that the Republicans keep on winning, but we got to beat them, right? All right, all right. All right listen, um, how did you get the name... How did you get the uh, nickname Fritz? My middle name is Frederick. So how does that... How does so that it's Fritz is a derivative, I guess. Kids call me Fritz. Well, okay. Are you, up for an, uh, are you up for an award or a free meal? Oh. I am on the board of Emerson Radio, which is sponsoring uh, today's event, so I'm here. Let me ask you a question. Were you afraid that... Were you afraid that... Were you afraid that Ferraro would get cramps in office? Back again. <laughs> you got that on film? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got to see that. <laughs> hey, I was concerned about that. <laughs> Meanwhile, he's saying to himself, you know, I should have thought of that damn Ferraro cost me the election probably. The Ferraro. What a prize. She didn't even get to have cramps with her, her husband. Her and that dumb husband. <laughs> or whatever. Was he ever cleared? 
No, he had to spend... What did he do? He uh, did something to some lady's will. He borrowed some no. money. He was the executor or something. Oh, big deal. He had to pay a few fines, I think. Just a woman's will. Mm. Sponsoring uh, today's event, so I'm here. Let me ask you a question. Were you afraid that... Oh, I know. Were you afraid that... Were you afraid that Ferraro <laughs> would get cramps in office? You know, I got to tell you something. <laughs> I sound like a snake was loose in the room. I know. I want to see that. I want to see. You know how he sometimes his head starts to go. Was your head rocking oh, back and forth? I get it. Yeah. I get it. And what was Mondale doing while you were? Uh... He was. He was just like, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> nope. Nobody has the nerve to walk away from a TV camera and a stutterer. Uh, I know. Like, you can't walk away from a stutterer. Because uh, they'll, they'll, we'll slap them with an injunction from the National <laughs> Stuttering Institute before they know it. <laughs> you don't walk away from me. <laughs> See, nobody has your sense of humor. Nobody, nobody gets the idea that it's a joke. Yeah, of course. I don't get it. <laughs> but, but they start, <laughs> they start getting it. We're in trouble. I'm sorry. Did Billy Carter ever, 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 uh, ever bond with the wife? Yeah, the vice president was thrilled to meet you. That was the best one he's ever I done. Can't put anything on, man. I, it sounded like almost. <laughs> that was a machine gun. Was, like, Understandably so. <laughs> this is like the verbal equivalent of peeing in your pants. Oh man! Oh my God. Oh, you know, came over me, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it wasn't anything like that. You know. Oh I, 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 I. <laughs> 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 you know how like women? All right, let me hear the whole question. Oh. The Billy Carter one is pretty good. Hey, this is where, let me just tell you what's going on in my head. This is where I'm trying to put a replacement word, word in for, in, oh. in, in, instead of saying vomit, I was trying to say puke now because I couldn't get out vomit. <laughs> yeah, but you got to go, you got to keep going for vomit. You got to read them exactly because we write them for your stutter. That's what I did. All right. This you know, funny. we want you to stutter. Oh, that's oh, you know, no yeah, offense. Yeah, I know. But we write it for your yeah, stutter in mind. Listen, you, know. right. you know, there's a lot more going on here, Robin, than uh, meets the eye. Oh, this is specifically written. Go, go for it. All right. His head must have been rattling like a maraca. Um, I think we're hearing what's inside. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hearing things clinking around in there. <laughs> ah, you you drink. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Oh. <laughs> All right. Here we go. What's your next question? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Did the Billy Carter ever... Ever... Uh, House. No, that's all right. I'm not talking about that. No, Billy, you know, Billy went through a, he's dead now, and Billy was an alcoholic, and like alcoholics, he do damn cool things, and it was a tragedy, it wasn't funny, and no. thank God before he died, he got over it and lived a, uh, an honorable life, right. and family man, so, so it's, it's, uh, it's a sad thing, it's yeah. not, you know what I mean? No, 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 I hear you. One final thing. Could you, uh... I hear you. <laughs> Barely. That's what the vice president needs to be. Yeah. I hear you. <laughs> if you would have told, the, you told the vice president, dude, I would have cried. Yeah. I like when he goes, uh, I stutter. I'm sorry. He goes, well, that's not what I'm talking about here. <laughs> Nobody's talking about anything. Uh, <laughs> I canceled the bachelor party for tomorrow. We're playing the tapes again. Because we got a whole boatload of tapes from, uh, from the Rock and Roll Awards, too, don't we? Um, Some stuff. Not really. Some oh, stuff. Okay, we're going to... All right. This is unbelievable. That was the best stutter uh, he has ever had. One more, time. one more time, really? Yeah. Really? It was the best. Uh, Just don't give that away, though. You make people pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> After that one, I'll never stutter again. <laughs> you couldn't top that. Uh, uh, an honorable life. Actually, I actually had an answer. No, that's all right. I'm not talking about that. <laughs> that's pretty funny. All right. Did the Billy Carter ever... Ever, uh... Ever vomit in the White House? <laughs> what the hell? What the hell does that look like on camera? <laughs> yeah? Got one. Got one. Got one. Got one. Got one. His chin touches his... Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've made it impossible for Leslie West to imitate you. Right. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, Howard, George Steinbrenner struck again yesterday, as they say. We now have the 18th Yankee manager since he bought the team in 1973. Yesterday, he let Bucky Dent go because the Yankees have the worst record in baseball. So the Buckmeister General was caught by some reporters, and here's what he had to say about his firing. I have nothing to be ashamed of. I'm not going to put my head down. You know, I feel like uh, I've done the best job that I can manage in this ball club. And yeah, but it was a bad job. <laughs> you, know, you do have something to be ashamed of. Uh, these guys have played hard for me. It's just that we've been unlucky at times, and uh, we've unlucky. been a little short. Yeah, that's like, uh, that's like Imus has been unlucky. It's called no talent. <laughs> We've been unlucky. I like people who blame stuff on luck, like luck actually exists. Well, yeah. You know, we've been unlucky. Well, according to the sportscasters yesterday, he has no team, really, to field. Right. They say, you know, they bought this guy. I mean, what is George Steinbrenner doing? He bought a guy up from the minors. <laughs> this is not even a guy anybody's ever heard of. Yeah. <laughs> to manage this team. Well, and that's the point. When you have a bad team, a manager should rise to the occasion, inspire the team, and see what he can do with them. I admit, you know, if you don't have a lot to work with, it's kind of tough. But that's when you're a good manager. When you got a great team, you know, anybody can manage it. <laughs> you got that much talent. So Bucky Dent, you know, hey, you got a bad team, do something with it. Inspire these guys. Kick a little ass. Somebody's got to be in last place, though, Howard. you got to think about that, too. Yeah, well. George Steinbrenner is saying the team is not as bad as, right. the, as you know, its record shows. So that's why he decided it was time for Bucky to go, even though he said that Bucky was going to stay the entire season no matter what. He couldn't hold true to that promise, and Bucky is gone. This new guy... Uh, came up from the minor leagues, never even played in the majors. Maybe because the Yankees are a good minor league team, so they got a guy who manages minor league teams. <laughs> Fairly decent idea. I, I buy into it. You're buying it. Yeah, huh? if you're going to have minor league players, why not have a minor league manager? <laughs> hey, and, and the deal is this. Stump Merrill, remember that? Name? Stump Merrill. <laughs> Isn't that Mark Chernoff's name? <laughs> <laughs> He's Stumpy. This is just Stump. <laughs> that was an answer on Jeopardy last night, Stump Merrill. Yeah? Yeah, it was. Hmm. It was, um... Uh, when David let him in some bed with his girlfriend, and she unscrews her wooden leg. <laughs> no, okay. I'm trying too hard. Anyway, listen. Um, what I thought was interesting, too, was the way local news handled this. The story was, hey, Bucky Den has been fired. So what do they do? They go out on the street and they ask guys opinions. Oh, yeah. They always do that piece where they ask the local fans what they think. Oh, and the big thing is to run over to Mickey Mantles. Right. Whenever you want to ask a baseball question. Or to ask a cab driver. Like, who would ever in their right mind ask a cab driver anything? So please, take me where I'm going and don't kill me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, you know, they go over and they start asking cab drivers. So I'm watching local news for 10 minutes, listening to the cab drivers' opinions on the Yankees. Well, I was watching Channel 4... I'm sure they gave this story a good 10 minutes. I said, oh. isn't anything else happening in the world? And then what was kind of funny was um, they always have, like, one woman in the piece. Oh, yes. You know, they always ask a woman's a opinion. A waitress. Or a bartender. <laughs> right. At Mickey Mantle. Yes. Like, the people who drink at Mickey Mantle's would know more about baseball <laughs> because, they, because they're drinking at Mickey Mantle's. <laughs> you, go, I, you know, what, where, what is that? And it's the same piece every time. Let's go over to Mickey Mantle's quick. We've got to get there before Channel 7. Channel 2 just got there. I tell you what, you keep them busy, I'll run into Mickey Mantles. You know what they could have done? They could have taken the same tape they used for Davy Johnson when they did the Man on the Street then yeah. and just put in, yeah. you know... <laughs> Absolutely. ...the other names. Bucky Dent! <laughs> Bucky Dent! <laughs> what else is in the list? Oh, we, we, unlike the network news and local news, will not spend 10 minutes no, on No, we're not going to uh, devote our entire newscast right. to the firing of Bucky Dent. go now <laughs> all right listen i had a upsetting weekend last weekend i uh got a call from wayne siegel my friend <laughs> and uh <laughs> and I, I really like wayne a lot wayne siegel is the guy who runs legend porsche Audi uh, Sub, yeah. Sterling Bruger. yeah i don't even know what he keeps changing the names of his car dealerships <laughs> every week okay he acquired jeep eagle 
All right, all right, just tell me, tell me about, tell me what you think of this conversation, okay? So I'm sitting at home, and I was kind of depressed last weekend. All right. It wasn't the best weekend. It wasn't the best weekend of my life. All right. Had a very difficult meeting. Had a difficult meeting over Channel Nine last week. My uh, my my in my brother-in-law, and my sister-in-law were in from Georgia, and you know when you're feeling like you want to be alone, it's. I built my house pretty big, but it's it kind of hard to escape them. Yeah, I couldn't <laughs> escape them, Rob. Em, okay. <laughs> there was no hi- no place to hide. I wanted to build another house just to hide it. <laughs> You know. That's why your wife had you tear down that other house. She knew what you'd do. Yeah, right. <laughs> she knew I'd go to it. So I'm just like hanging around. And we had had a rough one at Channel 9. You know. Jackie was being negative and <laughs> Robin was positive. <laughs> Where that came from, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, isn't it amazing that I got to be the positive yeah, one? You're kinda, that's kind of weird. Channel 9's impression of Robin is that she's the positive one. <laughs> Personally, she's like the biggest pain in the ass. But uh, she, uh, I don't know. I was very I impressed. I hate everything. Yeah, I know. <laughs> right on the money. Right on the money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, <laughs> putting together a television show is never easy. <laughs> That's what Bob Woodruff told me. Well, yeah. Yeah. I can see that. But well, I understand Steam Pipe Alley was very easy to put together. <laughs> hey, two people. Yeah, two people. <laughs> two guys right? that whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, nobody's writing broadcast, uh, nine broadcast plaza. <laughs> no. From what we hear. And look at how well they're doing. Yeah. And it's hard to believe they have a whole news department putting together the <laughs> Channel 9 News. <laughs> So anyway, uh, <laughs> I realize we're their only hope. Some of that programming, wow, mama mia. Well, you made a perfect point. It's going to be like a showcase for us. <laughs> yeah, it really is. But um, We're going to be the Simpsons. Yeah. <laughs> if we don't fly on that channel, what is? More Jethro and, Jethro and Ellie Mae reruns? Yeah. Yeah. I guess that would be it. Yeah, so evidently it's not so easy putting together a TV show. I got a fax yesterday of the new proposed format for the show, and uh, I don't get it. <laughs> I'm still working on it. So you just don't understand television now? Yeah, I guess maybe I don't. <laughs> I think the show is Joan Rivers is going to come on. Oh, uh, yeah? Yeah. That's the format. That's the format. <laughs> Joan Rivers is going to come on, and we're going to talk to her a lot. Ah. Basically, we're there to talk to Joan. Yeah. Talking to Joan should be the name of the show, then. Actually, I think what we should do is call it the Joan Rivers Show and have me come out and talk to her, like <laughs> like it's her show. Because I do better under that. But she already has her show, see? So <laughs> yeah. I guess that's why they changed it. <laughs> anyway, um, where were we? Oh, okay. So I had, had a rough day, okay? That's what I'm saying. And I was sitting at home trying to relax and Wayne called and I was happy to hear from Wayne because maybe he had something cool to do maybe he had some good stuff you never know every once in a while Wayne comes up with something neat to do uh-huh. so he calls me and he goes uh, in that annoying voice and I want to listen to Wayne because he does me a lot of favors whenever I need work on my car he helps me out the always com- takes care of you sometimes he even comes and picks up the car and helps me out because he knows I'm busy he's a good dude the service department, second to none, and they always do great by me, no matter what car it is. Even if I didn't buy the car from Wayne, they do great. Mm-hmm. So he called up and he goes, uh, i got to tell you something. I go, well, what is it? Um, on my commercial, you said legend uh, Porsche Audi Jeep Eagle. And um, the guy from... Even Chrysler got upset because I said, "I said Wayne, I gotta, I gotta stop you. I gotta stop you now." I said, "Wayne, I really have to, I have to break in here <laughs> because I was dizzy. I mean, I was, I couldn't even yell at him. And I want to be respectful. The guy spends a lot of money on the station." I said, "Wayne, it, I, it's my weekend. You want me to start taking down copy? Po- he wanted me to write down copy." Yeah. Isn't it? I go, do you want me to write down copy? you want me to get out a pencil and paper? No, no, no. I just want to tell you because... I, and I went like this. <laughs> into the phone. <laughs> I wish I had taped this. 
He's so annoying. You know, if it, it, usually it's like a call. Could you mention my brother Michael? Because he. Uh, And by the way, my father didn't give me everything in life. And I'm not bored with my family. Could you make my spots longer? You know, I, no. So I said to him, listen, Wayne, if there's a name change, because, you, you know, now he has Jeep Eagle and he just changed the name a couple months ago. If it's that important to you, why don't you just call the sales department? And then I started feeling bad because, you know, he doesn't throw me off on his sales department when I need help with my car or something. I said, well, but why don't you just call the sale? Because I'll write this down, and I won't remember. I'm not going to remember your copy. It's got to be in there on a daily basis. So he was like, okay, fine. But can't I just tell you that? Uh... I go, no, 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 no. Just tell the sales department. They'll tell me. Well, yesterday, the sales department came to me <laughs> and started to tell me, and I don't even know what the sales department... I don't... Wayne wants to tell something. And Robin said, look, I know what this is all about. I talked to Wayne. So I'm going to turn Wayne's commercial over to you and tell me what it is Wayne wants to tell everyone. Wayne wants to tell everyone that Michael Siegel, his, his brother. brother, is now running, and he's very proud <laughs> to be running. What a dick. Legend Volkswagen Jeep Eagle. All right. So then what was the name change? Legend Volkswagen Jeep Eagle and that is the new name. Okay, and it used to be... Oh, we can't say the old name. Oh, is that why yes. I was... Oh, <laughs> and you keep saying the old name, and Chrysler's very upset, and, blah, 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 and I'm just like, shut up! And Chrysler representative has to come now and <laughs> inspect. If I had had him... Is that what that is? Yes. What did he oh, say? A Chrysler guy what? He's into big trouble... Chrysler called, and now they have to come. And inspect and what? take a look to see what cars are in which showroom. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I could have had him in a room, I would have... You spoiled midget! Get one name for your inherited business! And cross out my phone number out of your book, you hairy dick! <laughs> You know, they can, they, they can tear down the Berlin Wall. They can discover a cure for skin cancer. But I can't avoid his phone calls. <laughs> what a jerk. He whines like a Rosalind housewife. <laughs> I swear to God. Come here, you little dwarf. <laughs> Everything handed to you in life in a silver platter. You never had to work a day in your life. And you're hocking me in my head on a Saturday morning. <laughs> <laughs> Go grow. <laughs> Get a life. <sighs> Jerk. <laughs> yep, you caused him big problems. <laughs> mm. Oh, and he starts working on me. And he said, I tried to call Howard twice and he didn't return my calls. You see what problem? Because are because I have to I have to take an energy pill. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Channel 9 called me about advertising on your TV. I said, listen, talk to them then. What are you bothering me for? If you want to advertise, go advertise. If you don't, don't. So what do you got to give me a history? I said, Tell, talk to me about what you do. I'd be fascinated to learn about the car business. That's okay. Not about the commercials, though. and not a, Do it in a different way. Ease it in. Grease me first. <laughs> with Michael, and Michael's upset, and the guy from Chrysler. Who cares about the guy from Chrysler? So let him come and inspect. What are you afraid of? Yeah, you, you're actually doing it. He's upset. What do you care? The guy from Chrysler should be thrilled that someone even pays attention. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to rip off all his clothes. <laughs> and I'm, uh, I'm going to throw that hairy bastard onto a wall of Velcro so he'll be stuck there the rest of his life. He'll be stuck to a wall. Help me! Help me! <laughs> all right, so let, thank you for clearing this up. So that was the big problem. That's very simple, isn't it? So you obviously got cornered somehow. Oh, yeah, he got caught me. Because <laughs> you needed help. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, I'm at the point where I didn't need any tires changed or oil changed or anything. So, right, yeah, yeah, I could blow him off. He's holding my car hostage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, you do this right. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> He's on the phone now. The commercial isn't long enough. <laughs> it's only been going on for five hours. Uh. Yeah. Anyway, so Legend announces the grand opening of Legend Jeep Eagle. Go see Michael Siegel. Right. And then there's Legend 
All right, that's it, I guess. And then there's Legend Porsche, Audi, Saab, Sterling, and Peugeot. Right. Now it's another name change. Cool. Because the guy from Chrysler is upset. What the guy from Chrysler has to do with this, I don't know. Because they own G. Beagle. Oh. <laughs> Oh, 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 wait, evidently you have more information. She mean, the guy from Chrysler owns Jeep Eagle, yes. and he said... And he, they, their whole deal depended on there only being Volkswagen Jeep Eagle I at see. one dealership. Oh, otherwise that they'd lose... The whole deal. Oh, I see. And he was afraid that they were secretly, over the radio, yes. selling... <laughs> okay. <laughs> guy from Chrysler's got to get a life. I'd like to meet him. <laughs> Legend Porsche, Chrysler, Jeep, Eagle, Volkswagen. Uh-oh, you did it again. Oh, no. Has to be rich to afford the sign up there. <laughs> all right, let's get it all straight. It's Legend, Jeep, Eagle, Legend Volkswagen. Volkswagen, Jeep, Eagle. Oh, man, oh, man. Can that guy get a life? Wayne Siegel just called in. Mm -hmm. He said he wants to know what day the boat ride is this year. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get Lee Iacocca on the phone for me. I want him to know about the lunatics that are working for him. <laughs> so, so he understands exactly what's going on in his organization. <laughs> They're over in uh, Amityville and on... Uh, I don't know. Oh, here we go again. Oh. Merrick Road in Massapequa, which is legend Jeep Eagle Volkswagen. Or Volkswagen Jeep Eagle. Oh, you mean it's got to be said that way? Yeah. Oh, you mean Volkswagen first? Yeah. Is that... Come on. It's Volkswagen Jeep Eagle. New name! Oh, and... It, it, oh, okay. Okay. All right, from now on, you're in charge of this commercial. I'm keeping quiet during it. You're in charge. All right? Come on, once in a while, you should be in charge of one of these commercials. What's the wrong with you taking some responsibility for the commercials? You're supposed to be taking these meetings. I shouldn't even be in this. Now, why should I be getting calls in my house? She's easy to work with. You are easy to work with, come to think of it. You, seem to, you, you know, it doesn't seem like a lot of information what you grasp there. But, I don't know, somehow on the phone Saturday morning, as I was sli sli slitting my wrists from that meeting over at Channel 9, you know, it just seemed a lot worse. Because I know he was re he was so upset because he was supposed to stop by my house. Well, see, the problem with Wayne is he wants to tell you how much agita he got yeah. from the commercial. I don't care. And I just sit there and I, like, hum to myself right. while that's going on. And yeah. then I wait for him to get to what he actually needs to say. He should absolutely be... Yeah, well, you're patient. I, he should absolutely be... You know, it's just that I talk all day and listen on the phone. And then I got Tom... Tom called my house yesterday. Oh, yeah? I didn't call, return his call. I can't take him either. <laughs> my general manager calls me. I, someone told me it was... I got the message at quarter of six, thank God. So now I have an excuse. That's my excuse right now. <laughs> Calls 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Who knows what he wanted, but it couldn't have been good news. Oh, I think I know what it was. He had a meeting with the guys from Channel 9. Oh, oh. Now that I'm thinking, now it just hit me like a ton of bricks. Yeah. Yeah, two brain surgeons getting together. Oh, my. Get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> this is terrible. Oh, this is the one of the worst catastrophes in the world. Oh, it's just... It's funny. Oh, all the humanity and all the fans. Oh. Mm. Tom. The guy from Channel 9 told me he thought Tom was an intelligent guy. I knew there was trouble. Uh, when did he say that? Before this meeting? He told me yesterday. He said that right, didn't he say that right after he said Robin was used to work with? Yeah. <laughs> well, to judge he, a character he here. He can't judge anybody's character. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's one thing to mistake me. Yeah, but yeah, that's two mistakes. <laughs> well, anyway. <laughs> hey, here's a, here's a song I found. I went through all our old material. Uh-huh. Um, do you remember the heart of William Schrader? Is still Schroeder, Schrader. Heart William Wil Schrader is still it? beating. Yeah, you remember that one? Yeah, that was pretty that, good, that right? That got us into big trouble. Yeah, <laughs> I found it. <laughs> oh my goodness! So offensive. It is offensive, but it was good. This guy had had a mechanical Ho heart put in his chest. <laughs> yeah, and he was he was living, <laughs> but he was living when we wrote it, and it looked like he was going to live. Oh, did not you stop that. We're going to take his bed. Want to hear it? <laughs> okay. All right. 749. Here's an old one. We did this in 19... <laughs> we did this in 1985. Wow. So that's like five years ago. <laughs> in fact, I can tell you the month we did it in. Did it in February. Oh. Pretty organized today, huh? All right. <laughs> Pretty I'm cool. impressed. Yeah, I'm trying to get that whole thing together. <laughs> I want to be like Ernie Kovacs. You know, have all of my shows chronologued and, yes. you know, put, a, put aside. Kinescoped. Kinescoped. 
Ernie um, was smart. He kinescoped. Yeah. Great. It's doing him a lot of good now. <laughs> Probably got in that uh, car accident worrying about where his kinescopes were, who was going to be stealing them, who was going to take them. He was a genius. Just didn't yeah. know anything about taxes. Yeah. And I like now Edie Adams, his widow, is going around saying that she didn't realize at the time he was a, a sick man. <laughs> she didn't realize this. She thought everybody ran around with a bottle of Jack Daniels under their arm. Yeah, right. Couldn't get to work without a bottle of Jack Daniels <laughs> and spent all their money, didn't pay any taxes. Right. You know? Judy Belushi laughs at her. 91 cents on every dollar. Yeah. That's how much they owed. Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam. They, they, they had to take 91 cents of every dollar he earned. Right. And he and was he earning a lot of money. He was, a, he, was a, he was making gobs of money. Yeah. And I like how they always call him, like, a television genius and stuff. Well, yeah, it's easy to be a television genius when you're up against Uncle Milty. <laughs> you Nobody know? else was on television. Nobody had ever seen television before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was smart. She cut the brake line on his car to keep him from spending all their money. <laughs> She's going to more bankruptcy. Guy was a loser. So a loser. Five years after he died, she was working for the government <laughs> for five years. But now she's running around with a book about what a wonderful man he was and how in love she was. Come on. It's like Judy Belushi. He's out cheating with every penthouse pet and playboy model he can get his hands on. She's in love with him. Please, you're better off with this new guy you got. Hope he doesn't get famous. <laughs> Hope he stays in just whatever it is he does. Here, her, here's the heart of William Schrader. We can listen to a little of it. Okay. Let's see if it holds. Let's see if it stands the test of time. Okay? Real tough to be a genius in 1952. Hmm, what should we watch tonight? Test Pattern or Ernie Kovacs show? <laughs> yeah, okay. Right, yeah, yeah. Okay, Ernie Kovacs. This was good. I remember this. Very dramatic. Everything they say, plastic and a metal machine. Not only does your heart pump blood, but it keeps your doctor's pockets lined with free. <laughs> Everywhere there's doctors, real fine doctors, healing men without a doubt. All with the intention of keeping you alive, at least until the medicate runs out. They say the heart of William Strait is still beating. And from what I see, he's still breathing When he gets the bit of hit the ceiling For the heart of William Schrader Heart of William Schrader's to be DC, AC, 110 or 20 volts They got you plugged in by your own bed have no fear, electricity is here. Just don't forget to pay on air. All the brains of science, ooh, that modern science. There is no way you can lose if you don't short out when you take a bath. Cause an overload could make you blow a fuse. They say the heart of William Strait is to be. And from what I see, he's to breathing. When he gets the feel of hit the ceiling. For the heart of Willie Strader, heart of Willie Strader's to be done. <laughs> Willie! Flo and Eddie on background vocals. I gave them a break in 1985. Yeah. Hollywood and the Sunset Strip are places that you'll never see. Cause those famous doctors won't let you leave your room, not even to take a fee. All those high-priced surgeons, ooh, those high-priced surgeons, they won't let you make the scene. Unless it's for the nightly news on CBS, or the cover of a People magazine. Love, 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 they say the heart of William Strait is to be. And from what I see is to reason 
When he gets the feeling, hit the ceiling For the heart of Willie Schrader Heart of Willie Schrader's to be seen He's breathing Whoa, whoa! The heart of William Schrader There it is. Heart of Willie Schrader still beating, Robin. Good. Yeah, yeah. Stands up. Yes, it does, Robin. Yes, it does. <laughs> I think that was before pig vomit, even. You think so? Yeah. You think we just erased? No, that might have been uh, Billy Fagin. Used to be a guy. Oh, yeah? still put the music together for us. Hmm. I was thinking about that. I said, have we known those guys that long? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what point, who did what, but... That was a good one. Yeah, we did get into some trouble for that, but I, I you know, maybe I'm thick, but I don't uh, get it. I just didn't think that a plastic heart, and you know, I didn't think it was really going to work out for the guy. <laughs> and I thought it was like a lot of hell to put a guy through. And let's face it, some things aren't meant to be. You know, sometimes dying, you got to go sometime. Sometimes it's the best option. Yeah, right. What? That, that was pig vomit, but you know what you got well, in was, that, yeah. you know what you got in trouble for involving this situation? I remember what Hayes got really mad about was uh, you got your friend from the gym who was an odds maker, and, yeah. you, and, and you had him lay out. Oh, Al the Jew? Right. Yeah. And you had, and you had him lay odds on when the guy was going to die. Yeah. But